Hello, everybody, and welcome to another live stream event. I am Rosie O'Kelly, a.k.a. Rosie Murphy, and welcome to each and every one of you. Do blondes have more fun in the kitchen? I'm not sure. Let me uh, turn mute this YouTube song. Coming through right over here. In the kitchen, I'm not sure. Let me turn Feedback and go go over there. <laughs> Good afternoon, perfect. Uh, nice to see you. We're gonna have a little bit of fun tonight. We have a. We always have uh, smaller crowds here for the uh, baking, and that's good. You know, it's a chance for us to uh, do something fun here and make something that we can enjoy for days and days hi candy kisses nice to see you honey so we are underway today jewish deli rye bread to me one of the greatest pleasures in life is being in new york city and visiting the famed uh, carnegie and the cat's deli i think one of them is no longer in uh, I think one of them folded up. I'm just not sure about about it, but I can tell you what. Hi, Miss Breeze. Nice to see you. I can tell you what. One of life's greatest pleasures is going in there and getting a for, fully loaded corned beef sandwich or pastrami on Jewish rye. It is amazing. It is one of the great taste experiences. If you like a bread that's very robust and has a lot of flavor to it. The Jewish deli rye bread is the one. Now, what is what's at the heart of? Uh, thank you, Candy. You're sweet. What is at the heart of a good Jewish uh, deli bread? Well, I can tell you this. What's at the heart of it? Hi, Lisa. How are you doing, baby doll? I'm doing good, honey. Nice to see you. Mm. What's at the heart of it is something called caraway seeds. And caraway is one of those flavors, one of those, and you know something's a true spice or a true seasoning when you can't define it, okay? It doesn't taste like anything else. Lemon doesn't taste like anything else. Chocolate doesn't taste like anything else. Cinnamon doesn't taste like anything else. Pepper, they're all distinct. They are all distinct. Yeah, let's get on these. Let me put on the uh, live chat. Thank you for reminding me. Anytime you guys come into my chat, I really appreciate it. Stewie, how are you? Diamond Slash Ranch, nice to see you. I always appreciate it. If you guys remind me to enable your, uh, and you guys too, make sure you enable your live chat as opposed to uh, top chat. I'll never understand why YouTube has that. You know, it's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, only a few of us come check in. Yeah, it's good. I like to have, you know, sometimes, and Mama Beth will tell you too, sometimes it's nicer to have a smaller crowd that's really interested in what you're doing as opposed to a, uh, you know, a big crowd. I get some panels sometimes and some hangouts, and I'm sure, you know, uh, Miss Effing Wonderful and Diane and uh, Shoot the Shit, they have enormous, you know, we get big panels, we get big things, but sometimes it's the smaller ones that are more fun. Hi, hello, Manuel. Hey, Nathan, how are you doing? Nice to see you, my friend. Nice to see you. So at the heart of a good Jewish deli rye is caraway seeds. Okay. They are so distinct. Oh, I could just smell them all day long. They should they should use this for people that have trouble with appetite, you know, chemotherapy and stuff like that. They misdemeanor. They should serve this. Can you smell that? Those caraway seeds. They should serve that. They should blow that through the air. That is so darn. It's just savor. It's such a deep flavor. And caraway seeds are at the heart of a great Jewish rye bread. Okay, what else is there? You can get light rye flour, or you can do what I did, get dark rye flour. Okay? You're going to need rye flour. Okay? 
very important. I like to use Bob's Red Mill. It, it contains all, as, as it says here, contains all the health uh, giving nutrients of the premium U.S. number one grade dark rye from which it is ground. Just it adds a great, great flavor uh, to it. And you can't make it with that. Don't call it rye. Some people spike in caraway seeds to white bread. It's not the same. Sean, how are you doing, sweetie? Nice to see you. So I'm going to get something to drink, and I'm going to tell you what I did started la starting last night. I cannot have, you know, there's other people's streams I want to watch that are doing things today, too. I'm not sure if Mama Beth is uh, cooking today, but there's other streams. So I don't want to run one of these five-hour streams. Plus, if you're going to make the bread, okay, Lisa, I will definitely uh, stop by and say hi. If you're going to make a really good bread, it's almost mandatory that you start the day before. Why? Because if you start a little bit of your starter poolish, they call it P-O-O-L-I-S-H, poolish, then you get a uh, you get something that's very flavorful and very deep. Now, what is a Polish? It's a very wet, sticky dough that you start with a tiny bit. You take some flour, in this case, some rye flour from the night before, and you add it into you add that with some water and a tiny bit of yeast, and much more water than usually makes a dough. And you have like a very wet. What would you call it? Like almost a batter. And you cover that with just a little teeny vent hole so that some of the natural yeast can get in there from the environment. And what that does is it gets all bubbly and happy overnight. And then you come back the next day and you add your white flour. You add your salt. You add a little bit. In this case, I always add a teaspoon of Asian rice wine vinegar because that's going to sour it off slightly. You put in some, either you can put in a uh, half a cup of super finely chiced, uh, diced, a quarter cup of uh, diced onions, super finely chopped, or you can use a half a teaspoon of onion powder like I did. It's a little bit like sourdough. It's a little bit like sourdough. That's correct, Iris. But it's a very rapid sort of sourdough because you are using yeast as the starter as opposed to using a sourdough that you build up over a week to 10 days. And I'm going to tell you, if you're going to make a sourdough starter of any, time, of any kind, you want to make very sure that you use unsweetened pineapple juice, natural pineapple juice, the little cans. They make great starters for beginning your, your uh, sourdough. Reason being is they don't allow for the fermentation and growth of bad bacteria. By the very nature of natural pineapple juice, it's very resistant to growth of bad uh, bad strains, bacteria, and you're getting the good stuff in there. So always highly recommended that you use a, um, you know, pineapple, or unsweetened pineapple juice. I didn't do that. I'm going to go back in time a little bit and talk about last night. I've got a, I've got a whole bowl of uh, beautiful rye dough here. I'm going to put this out on the counter a little bit. And we're going to work it down. I've cleaned the counter very well today. I'm going to put some flour down. I'm going to keep this on here because we're going to let this rise a second time. And remember, every subsequent rise of bread is half the time of the other one. And this is this has risen beautifully from about half the volume. And the smell is unbelievable. What I do is I just give a quick punch in the middle. And that just deflates the dough right down there. So I'm going to put a little bit of flour on the counter here. Let me grab that. Put a little bit of flour down. I try not to incorporate too much flour into it. Okay, you don't want to. You don't want to dry this out too much. And then I'm going to work from the edges and just pull it into the center like that. I cannot tell you guys the smell 
And as soon as we get this, uh, as soon as we get this turned out and reworked, we'll go over the recipe that you want to use. Okay. And I put some, I did use some spray in there to keep that from sticking. It's going to go right back into the bowl again. So I'm going to sit that on the side. Then what I'm going to do. I'm going to open that up, make sure you get enough flour down there. I'm going to kind of stretch that out a little bit like that. I'm going to fold it into the center on itself, one side and then the other. Hooker, how are you doing, baby doll? Nice to see you. Hooker, I didn't, um, uh, I did get your email, honey, but honest to goodness, I don't want you sending us a doggone thing. I love you to pieces, as you know. And uh, the thing I love best about you is your absolute, genuine, and wonderful friendship. So I'm going to tuck that underneath there, just like that. And then I'm taking my hands, and I'm working it underneath, and I'm pushing it together towards the center. And look at that. We have a nice, beautiful ball that's going to rise here. Uh, Lisa, you live stream, too. You should have a wrench. If you live stream, you hold a wrench in here. So that's it. Okay, there you go, honey. All right, there we go. So there it is. That's a beautiful, beautiful, and that should take about a half hour or so to double in size. I'm going to spray this again. Get this on. Yeah, yeah, I treasure you. It would be far beyond shirts and all that stuff. So I want you to keep every penny you have. We get by, okay. I think the uh, I had a lot of feedback on the uh, Tammy. How are you? I had a lot of feedback on the the ghetto choo choo stuff. But you got to remember, guys. I was raised that way. Okay, I was raised. To me, that's as comfortable as you would be out camping in the wilderness. Okay, that's the way I feel about that. I'm going to sit this in the bowl again, and we are going to let this go through a second rise, and we're going to back up and we're going to talk about the recipe here. Okay, I'm going to put this right back on. Got my plastic. You don't want this to dry out, okay? And then we're going to talk about the recipe. I'm going to get the, the soda here and sit down and take it easy. Chat with you guys. Have a little afternoon fun here today. Oh, yeah, sure. Standard rule in here. Then I don't have anybody complaining that things aren't fair. If you live stream... You get a wrench, and that's the way it is. So I don't care who you are. That way I have no worries about anything. What I'm going to also do is remove the rack here. All right, and I have been very grateful for the most part. Um, for the most part, I have been very, very happy with the way my hangouts have been. I'm not a lightning rod for a lot of controversy and stuff, and that's good. What I'm going to do is I've just turned on the oven. I want to get this up to about 120 degrees. I want to kind of push this second rise. You shouldn't really push it because... Because the longer something ferments and naturally rises, hi Sarah, the better and deeper the flavor is. So I've turned that on the lowest setting of uh, 100 degrees. Who knows how well that works. The other thing I think it's great to have when you're baking I can find it is one of these. Hey, Roy Myers. The other thing that's nice to have is one of these. This is called a bench scraper, and they're made by Winco. It's stainless steel. You can get them in wood. You can get them in plastic. You can get them in black and white. And these things are awesome because you know what they do. They can super clean your counter. We're not going to waste that flour. We're just aggregating it in the middle again. But these things are excellent. 
for working dough when you're working wet doughs and things like that. These are these are really excellent to have. These things are awesome. That's right, Sarah. These things are called they're called bench scrapers, dough cutter. You can use them as a dough cutter. The other thing I want to show you guys is a lot of people use food processors when they're making uh, things like biscuits or they're making things where you have to cut in the butter, uh, like pie dough. But you can also use something like this. Something like this. This is called a pastry cutter. And it achieves the same purpose when you get your ice cold, almost frozen butter and you get it in there with the flour and you work that down in there. It does a marvelous job of cutting that butter in because you don't want to put your hands down to the last minute when you flake the when you flake the little bits of butter into the flour. You use your fingers. But you try to avoid as long high spears, hay stickers, but you try to avoid stickers. Can you verify that uh, everything worked today? Everything worked for you today. So you want to, um, hey, tooth decay. So these things are excellent too. They're called pastry cutters. And when you go to CIA, the Culinary Institute in America, they don't put you in front of a food processor. First thing they do is they put you in front of two knives to do it the French way, cutting it in. Then when you do that well, they give you a pastry cutter. Then when you master that, yeah, check it out because it went through today. And check my uh, check my email too. I forgot to put the CO in your in your Yahoo address. Now, hey Dave, misdemeanor said my biscuits always turn out like flat flying saucers. Reason being is you probably overwork the dough. And you have to make sure you put a little more moisture into the dough too. Okay. So let's get back to talking about let me grab my uh, let me grab my uh, phone here. I've got the recipe. It's also people always say um, that um, they want the recipe link in the description box. If you look down there in the description box, you will see the link to the recipe I'm using today. It's a recipe where you should start the day before. Okay. I want to make sure this oven isn't killing this. Uh, I'm going to turn that off now and let that dry. We're going to give that about a half hour. Okay, that should be good. I don't want it to overheat it there, so that's for that's for darn sure. Um, yeah, let's talk about the recipe now. Let's talk about making this Polish the night before. Polish is P-O-O-L-I-S-H, and what Polish does is it helps to give a little bit of depth to the bread that you're making, and it moves it from regular say regular white bread that you're making sandwich bread it moves it into the artisan class of bread and this is a very important thing yes i'm the marilyn monrose in the kitchen <laughs> um let's see did everybody's uh did everybody's uh Cell phones go off today. All of a sudden, about 11 o'clock, I jumped B or 10.30. All of a sudden, I got a presidential warning today. <laughs> that was pretty crazy. Oh, yeah, we're good. Okay, thank you. Well, thank you, uh, stickers. I appreciate it. So, uh, yeah, I, I, uh, my fault. I forgot to put the CEO in your, uh, your address there. So it's all good. And, uh, yeah, I can just say if anybody wants... Uh, really good channel trailers made, stickers, uh, Boyd Stickers made a wonderful one for me. Check it out. You can contact him. He can help you make uh, banners for your channel and all kinds of graphic stuff. And he's really uh, he's really good with that uh, stuff. Okay. So let's see what this recipe was here. Starting the night before. We got a little bit of time to kill here. So let's let's get this done the right way. All right. Here we go. Let me grab one more picture of this, okay? Oh, 
All right, now they call it a they call it a, a rye starter, a sourdough starter. Nice to see you, Toothy. They call it, and if you do have sourdough starter of any kind, if you have any kind of sourdough that you started from natural yeast, that's a great thing to have. It's a wonderful thing to have. But most people aren't patient enough to start a sourdough starter and then feed it all the time and keep it going. I mean, in San Francisco, where they really invented uh, uh, the San Francisco style of, of uh, extra extra sharp sourdough, they have some sourdough that's gone back to the 1880s, some starter that they've kept gone since the 1880s. I mean, it's absolutely crazy. But most people want to step in the kitchen and they might get the urge to do a uh, – do, bake bread. They don't have time to do that. So let's talk about this uh, starter. So the night before, you take about uh, a third of a cup of room temperature water. Okay, doesn't have to be filtered, doesn't have to be just plain tap water. And you put that in with a quarter of a teaspoon, a very tiny amount, very tiny of yeast. And I like to use the instant yeast. It works very well, but only a very small amount. Why? Because you don't want the yeast to consume all the sugars and starches before the next day. So very, even an eighth of a teaspoon is enough to make that yeast culture explode overnight in your bread. Then you're going to add uh, two-thirds of a cup of the dark rye flour. And that's what I have. Tracy, how are you, sweetheart? Nice to see you. Two thirds of a cup of dark rye flour. And what's going to happen the night before? You're going to have a, it's going to be kind of a liquidy thing. You stir that together real well. And everybody should have, everybody should have a collection of wooden spoons. You don't want metal on metal scraping with metal spoons when you're working with metal bowls or even ceramic bowls. Every time you scrape, you're getting minute traces of steel and, God forbid, aluminum. Never use aluminum uh, cookware. And even, even ceramic that's sealed and fired, you're still getting microscopic quantities of glass and things like that in there. So remember that, okay? Hey, Connie Lee, these things are excellent. Wooden spoons are outstanding. And this one's been through the mill, as you can see. But I don't give them up. Yep, you have to use wooden spoons. These things, they're also very sanitary. They're cleaner than using plastic in a lot of cases, okay? And these things are just excellent for stirring and uh, getting batters going and things like that. Okay, so now it's the next day. I got up today, and I had a very lively, I had uh, my, I had a metal bowl my stainless steel bowl. I woke up this morning and had that covered last night, that starter. I woke up this morning and it was absolutely bubbly and happy. And then uh, about a half hour later, after I got everything done in the morning here, I went ahead and started working on that again and building that up. To that, I added one and a third cups of tap water, room temperature, could be a little bit on the warm side, about, uh, about 90 degrees or so. I added that in. Then I added uh, one and a quarter teaspoons of active dry, active dry yeast. This is the stuff I like to use, rapid rise. You can also use the regular yeast too. Okay, I just throw in one envelope of that. This stuff is easy. I have brewer's yeast. It's just as fine. Red, red star. But this stuff is nice. You see it in all the stores. Everywhere. Hey, Mike Jagger. Nice to see you. You see that everywhere in all the stores. Okay. I like to use that one. I like to use that one. It works real good. I need some Jewish rye bread in my life. I do, too. Hey, Sesame Sun. Oh, you like the blonde here. Thank you. Very sweet of you. All right, and then you're going to add all of the uh, all of that stuff from the night before. You're going to pour in all of that starter, what they call the polish. It was in my metal bowl. You add that into the bowl with the water and the uh, yeast, 
And then on top of that, you're going to add three and three quarter cups of white flour onto there. Okay? Three and three quarter cups of white flour. It can be regular flour. I'm not one of these people that's all anal retentive about bleached and unbleached. Of course, unbleached is probably better. You know, standard gold metal. Uh, you can get some bread flowers that are great. Hi, uh, Matronista. How are you doing, sweetheart? Nice to see you today. Okay. You're going to add those three and three quarter cups of flour, one tablespoon of caraway seeds. And remember, this is this is the key. This is what makes real Jewish deli style, any, any type of rye bread, you need to have caraway seeds, okay? For that really distinctive oomph, that real push of flavor in there. Now, when I made my, what you don't see here, and I'm going to tell you, is I add something else to this. I added half of a teaspoon of Asian rice wine vinegar. vinegar. Why? Because that strikes just a, just a little bit of a sour note. Some, some Jewish rye bread is made with pickle juice. They'll take a quarter cup of, of, of pickle juice brine and they'll put it in. Okay? For me, I can, say, I can achieve the same thing with a half a teaspoon of uh, Asian rice wine vinegar. Yeah, and I want everybody to remember Matronista and her husband and her family in the chat today. She's a wonderful friend of ours. She's dealing with a husband that has uh, stomach cancer now, along with a multitude of other issues, can, in even her own health. So, you know, we try to do what I can, uh, we can. Cooper, Cooper and I are on a three-way uh, chat with her during days and stuff, and we love being supported. But prayers are awesome too. Okay, to stop, just reflect a minute and uh, send up a good prayer uh, for her. Okay, very, very, very important. Okay, so we've got the uh, three and three quarter cups of bread flour, and they, they call for one tablespoon. I used a tablespoon and a quarter of them. Yes, I have made soda bread. Hey, Francis, nice to see you, my friend. But they make boobs get bigger. Francis said fennel seeds are good too, but they make boobs get bigger. I mean, God forbid. <laughs> if my boobs get any bigger, I don't know where in the hell I'm gonna I'm gonna put it, right? <laughs> so we get one and a quarter tablespoons of caraway seeds, uh, one tablespoon of ground, and in other words, you're putting a lot in here. One tablespoon of ground. You can actually take these and put these. In a little mill, or you can bust these with a, in a plastic bag with a rolling pin, and you can release them to a powder state for even more flavor. So you're going to put the one tablespoon of the ground caraway seeds, then one and a half teaspoons of the whole caraway seeds. That's right, Francis, because Pepperidge Farm remembers, huh? All right, and then you're going to put two teaspoons of fine sea salt. Now, here's the next important thing. This is going to make a consistency if you make bread, standard white bread or French bread, you're not going to be used to the consistency of this bread, okay, working with it. But let me tell you, if you want a high-rising Jewish deli-style bread, for the next 20 minutes, 10 to 20 minutes, You've got to beat the hell. You've got to beat the living hell out of this mixture, this dough. This is all going to come together. If you need to add a little more just to firm it up, but don't add additional water too soon. Reason being, it takes time for the, it takes time for the uh, grains to absorb the moisture and naturally dry up the batter. But this morning, I brought in the mixer. The Cuisinart mixer. Okay, I will definitely leave this. This will definitely, all of my stuff stays up on here, so don't worry. I have started making it yet. It's, it's going through, it's going through its second rise right now. Okay. There it is right there. Okay. I'm just letting that rise a little bit, be a little bit more. And then I don't want to whack the yeast. 
and kill me over Jewish cheesecake. That's it. Very, very important. You're going to put all that into a mixing bowl, and you're going to you're going to combine that on low speed. If you have a 12 setting, you'll be combining that at number four. You're going to combine that together, and then what are you going to do after five minutes? Hey, Lou, nice to see you. After five minutes, you're going to you're going to turn it off and you're going to walk away. Okay, I don't want to get this too, too hot in here. It feels comfortable. Okay, but I don't want it to get I don't want it to get too too warm in there. That'll give it a good uh, a good start in there. After five minutes, turn off your mixer. Walk away. Walk away for about ten minutes. This is a this is a trick that Julia Child taught me. Not in her later stuff, because her later stuff was more about uh, Jessica Jennifer. Hi, sweetie. Her later stuff was more about entertainment and working with other chefs in her kitchen. But if you go back on YouTube and you look at Julia Child's early stuff from the 1960s, the black and white stuff, and you watch her mix up a dough, I don't care whether it's French bread, she takes that and she slams that. She takes that and slams that down on the counter. After she brings all that together, after five minutes, she restarts her mixer. And then she she beats the hell out of that for like five to ten minutes, then removes it from her mixture, takes that, stretches that out, and then takes that, wham, throws that down on the counter, slap it. Why? Because that helps to wake up the gluten and get maximum absorption of that uh, of the liquid that's added into it. For me, I didn't take it out on the counter and beat the heck out of it because I have very powerful mixers. We have very powerful mixers. We had powerful mixers then, but she rarely used the mixer when she was doing breading. She would bring things together by hand and do it that way. Hey, Linda, nice to see you. <laughs> yeah, I came in a bit earlier. I couldn't decide to start whether it's 1 or 2 o'clock today. I just decided to start at 1 so I wouldn't be on top of other people. Okay, so this is what I did after that. After I walked away for five minutes, and I let that that dough rest in underneath the dough hook in the mixer. I walked away. I did some cleaning and I did some other stuff. And after about uh, ten minutes, fifteen minutes, I came back and I turned that mixer on, and I beat the living you know what out of that dough. For the next 15 minutes, I I laid on top of that. I sat on top of that mixer, pushing that dough hook down in that bowl. And for about 10 to 15 minutes, I just beat that on high speed. What happened was that dough cleaned the side of the bowl. Every bit of it was around there being pounded on the outside. And I want to tell you what, it had a perfectly good dough that came out it wasn't sticky at all but it wasn't real dry i then took that put that into the bowl covered it with the plastic and sat that outside in the sunshine this morning what little bit we had to let that uh, to let that rise off so very very important very very important step for that so okay we've covered off the caraway the importance of that this bread has no extra, it has no oils added to it. Like I said, you can add a half a teaspoon of onion powder like I did, just to give a little onion in a half a teaspoon of Asian rice wine vinegar or red wine vinegar if you have that. Just something to punch a little tiny bit of sourness into that because frankly, I don't have pickle, pickle juice water because pickle Rick's not here. I don't have pickle juice water to put into the... Uh, to put into the dough. So what do you do when you don't have the ingredients that uh, at hand you kind of improvise and you think about what would be a good reasonable substitute that for that? An Asian rice wine vinegar and a little bit of onion powder added in there would be absolutely perfect. Okay, Linda, no, no problem at all. Just didn't do too much in the beginning. You know, I didn't want to have one of these hangouts like with the with the baguettes that it was five hours long and we're just sitting around. So the first part of building it 
has been done, but I talked about it extensively that anybody can now follow along and they can also see the recipe in the description box. Okay, so this is now going through its uh, second rise. It's looking very happy. It's starting to rise up there. So I'm going to grab something to drink here. <laughs> and then we can uh, just chat about other things and uh, yeah I think so far so thank you mama Beth you just don't want to this is why it's, sometimes I video my baking and sometimes I do a live stream lately I've been in kind of a live stream kick because it's a lot of fun to interact with people sometimes I do um the video that way i can compress into a short 10 minute video about doing it but you don't get the real time feel and you don't get the real time look of it and you don't get some of the little hacks and some of the important things that make it good uh, that make it good the other thing that you want to make sure is you should really either be prepared to start your bread on the bottom of the oven hey bean sprout now that's going to sound crazy well, let me get a drink and we'll talk about that How are you doing, Bean Sprout? Well, Mama Beth, I think you're quite good at that too. If you're going to be a live streamer, you you got to be able to engage people. You got to be able to fill the downtime, but you got to also tell people some of your experiences and give them some tips. Because as you know, Mama Beth, the more you cook and the more you bake, the more you start. Okay, take care, of Bean Sprout. Have fun, babe. The more you cook and the more you bake, the more you start to play around with recipes and the more you start to add your own little twists and things to them. And that's what makes it really fun. You don't have to sit there slaving over measuring spoons for a teaspoon of, uh, of salt. You don't have to sit there gobbing on you, of how much flour and water. Yeah, you do a rough measure. But then you know the feel of something. You know the look of something. And you know if it's right. And you know what it needs. You absolutely know what it needs, and that's the beautiful thing. Don't have pickle juice for Jewish rye bread? Go get some Asian rice wine vinegar. Add a half teaspoon, a teaspoon of that to the uh, dough. Uh, also add a little bit of onion powder, and you can get some really super authentic flavors in that. I just can't tell you, the smell of Jewish deli rye bread is amazing. Yeah, I'm kind of a baby when it comes to uh, horror nights, too. It, 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 I don't like really super scary stuff. Yeah, it's like the decorations I buy for the house and stuff. I don't want uh, bloody ghouls and stuff dropping, jumping out on kids and things. It's uh, This hood is tough enough, right? So I just I put kind of, kind of, I don't know, non, non really creepy, just traditional, very traditional Halloween decorations around and it works out well let's talk about how people can make better bread now one of the biggest things I've learned and if you really want to make better bread here's the secret there's two things that you need to do number one for the first 10 minutes that that bread is baking you've got to try to maintain a moist environment in that oven not dry moist Oh, JC, thank you. Oh, I love Montana. There we go. Yeah, cute things like black jack-o'-lanterns, black cats, witches, all that kind of stuff. Half moon. I like that stuff. Real traditional. Before Halloween really went off the rails for some really radical, <laughs> radical kind of stuff. But why do you need a moist environment for that bread? The reason you have a moist environment and the reason that commercial bakers have steam injected ovens when they bake is you're trying to you're trying to retard or slow down the formation of the crust 
as long as you can. Because as soon as the bread starts to form that outside crust, it's done all the things, it's done all the rising that you that it's going to do. Once that crust is set, it locks in that bread. Okay, this is why some people get hockey pucks when they bake bread. Because the environment is not moist enough in the oven. Okay. Hey, Jenny. Jen, nice to see you, sweetie. Trust me. That's right, Mama Beth. How do you keep it moist when my, my normal environment is so dry? I'm going to tell you how to do it. This is called a skillet. You're going to sit this now. If you, you, everybody should have a baking stone. Okay? Everybody should have one of these. This is a baking stone. I'm not sitting the I'm not going to be sitting the bread directly on the baking stone. I'm going to be sitting the bread on a round pan, pizza pan. And I'm going to be sitting that pizza pan directly on this stone. Why? Because this stone is going to transfer an incredible amount of initial heat to that dough. And it's going to create massive, what they call oven spring. Or the ability of that bread to just grow and expand like crazy. If you just sit it on a rack in your kitchen... You're depriving that dough of that initial blast that it needs. If you don't have a baking stone, what do you do? You put your pan with the bread on the very bottom of your oven floor. Nobody else that's making bread is ever telling you to put your bread on the floor of the oven for the first 10 minutes. Okay? But it works. Eight to ten minutes. Give it six or seven minutes. Monitor it. Then after six or seven minutes, eight minutes, ten minutes, you move it up to the upper shelf. You reduce the heat, and you bake it off. For the moisture, you need to have something oven-proof that you can sit in the oven. On the bottom of the oven, okay, if you're going to use a baking stone, you slide this underneath on the bottom, right below it. Okay, and when you preheat your oven, you heat this skillet with it. Okay, and when it comes time to put in your bread, you should have one, you should have one of these things. You recognize this from Pam and Ricky, the spray bottle? Everybody should have a spray bottle it's filled with plain tap water. And when you go to stick that bread in the oven, you give that a real good spray. And Kathy, nice to see you, by the way, my friend Kathy's Vintage TV. How you doing today, sweetheart? Nice to see you. You spray that. And you give it some initial moistness on top. It'll prevent that crust from forming. And when you go to put that bread in the oven, your skillet's already been heating in there. And it doesn't have to be a big one. Uh, thank you, Jenny. It doesn't have to be a big one. You're going to pull out the handle. You're going to take two cups of ice cubes. And you're going to pour it into your skillet very carefully. Make sure you use oven mitts. Okay? If your rack is wide enough, the the, uh, the bars on the rack are wide enough, and your ice cubes are small enough, you can just pour your ice cubes right through the rack, and they'll hit the uh, hit below. When that ice hits that skillet, when that ice hits that skillet, it's gonna make steam like nobody's with the moisture in that oven until all of that ice is evaporated. That moisture in that oven is going to be phenomenal. Okay? That combined with this, 
is going to prevent that crust from forming for as long as possible while at the same time the oven spring is working from down below with that intense heat that the pan is sitting either on a baking stone or on the bottom of the oven floor that intense heat is driving those driving those yeast into one last orgy frenzy of good times before the party's over they're going into hyperdrive okay and that bread is getting big and that bread is getting hardest moisture let that go a little longer moisture heat two critical things now i'm going to tell you the third thing that's going to defy everything you ever heard about baking bread <clears throat> most of the recipes you hear for baking bread are throw this into the oven at 350 degrees for an hour you want a real artisan bread you got to blast that that first five to ten minutes of baking you got to blast that as high as the heat will go in your oven my oven goes to 800 degrees Fahrenheit. 800. That's the temperature I start baking my bread. 800 degrees. Why? Because it's further exciting the yeast in that final orgy of good times and getting the maximum size that you can get out of that loaf of bread. You, you create all those air pockets. All those nice holes that hold all the butter and everything, that's because of that. Now, every oven is different. You say to yourself, gee, my oven only goes up to 550 degrees. Fine. Started for five or 10 minutes. Just monitor it. Everybody's oven is different. Make sure it's not burning. It will rarely burn the bottom. Even as it is when you're done, you know what they do in bakeries? They just scrape the bottom a little bit. But bakeries are baking at 800. They're blasting the heat on these things. Okay, because that's creating massive oven spring in conjunction with the moisture that retards the formation of the crust. It's absolutely glorious the way that that works. So there's, a, there's what you need to make a really good loaf of artisan bread there might be some variations you know i've already put my skillet in the oven just to remind me to get that ready i'm going hey jeremy nice to see you i do have a convection oven i do have a convection oven i have a fisher paykel convection oven Let's see if i can work this through with that Let's give you a look at my oven here. It's a uh, Fisher Paykel. It has the wok burner in the center, which I like. Hey, Pirate, how you doing, sweetheart? It has the uh, wok burner in the center, which is really good. And it has here the setting for if you just want to have the light or you want to have the fan. And let me tell you, the fan circulates heat evenly, so things brown and things bake evenly. Okay, that's the way. It's the way it looks inside. You can see the fan in the back. Now, if you want to pay another thousand, two thousand dollars, you want to have a plumber come in. They'll be glad to hook you up a steam injected oven. But I'll tell you what, you better be making a hell of a lot of bread when you pay four or five thousand, three thousand dollars for a steam injected oven. I think this was about a, I don't know what it was, a two thousand dollars. I'm not sure what it was. I don't even remember. Okay, JC. If you bake a lot like I do, a convection oven is an outstanding asset to have. Because a lot of people have the problem when they go in, JK, how you doing? Even dryers run water to make steam now. There you go. But they're awesome because a lot of people, when they're baking bread, they got to go in and, or cookies, they go in and they turn, they turn the sheet to make sure that they, uh, they cook, uh, that they bake evenly on there. 
Hey, Breeze, nice to see you. So it's really, really awesome. We got this is this is really starting to uh, do its second rise pretty rapidly now here, but you don't want to really rush it. So does anybody have any uh, anything they want to add, subtract, multiply, or divide? Yeah, one or apple cider vinegar would work. That's all I have on hand right now. Um, that could work. Just remember, it's just a teaspoon or two. That's all it is. Just a teaspoon or two. Anything that can introduce sourness. Okay. Uh, thank you, J.K. I appreciate that, honey. Trying to find it. Oh, I got shit flying out everywhere out of here. If you have, this is how relish for hot dogs and all that. You can go ahead and kind of put put a put a uh, put a tablespoon or two into a plastic bag and just kind of smush it down. You almost liquefy, and you'll have the same thing of that dill, that pickle juice flavor on there. Okay. Hey Cassidy, haven't seen you in a while. Hi, hi Janet, how are you? Occasional woman, nice to see you. Okay, so here's another thing that you can do, another little hack if you don't have pickle juice. Just get some of your relish. Cassidy. <laughs> Cassidy's like, Rosie, I am a bacon fool. Yeah, and stuff. How you doing today, Pirate? How's it going? We are making Jewish deli style rye bread today. This is our second rise here. In about uh, five or ten minutes, we're going to pull it out of here and we're going to put it on its final pan and get it ready for its final rise and journey into the oven there. And I was just taking time to give a few hacks. So now the first commercial. Commercial rye bread has its sour flavor. Uh, they don't use vinegar, Linda Francine. They use uh, pickle juice, and they also add some uh, chopped diced onion, very finely chopped onion on there. I didn't feel like chopping onions, so what I did is get some onion powder, and I put a half a teaspoon of onion powder into the dough. And I also took a teaspoon of Asian rice wine vinegar. And I put it into the dough. And those com in combination there, that's going to sour up the dough and give that a good sour type of uh, flavor. It's going to imitate a sourdough rye bread. Okay, so that's what I did. When you're baking, you have to be able to improvise and sometimes compromise on ingredients. If you want sour, there's a lot of things that bring sour. You love that, Jenny Jan, huh? There's a lot of things that'll bring sour to uh, sour to a uh, bread besides just having a sourdough start. Dill pickle juice, right? Exactly. Dill pickle juice, uh, sweet, just a little sweet relish can do in a trick, but uh, you want to have that standard pickle juice. Okay, there's a lot of variations to the recipe. Some people don't use any of those uh, any of those things. I'm back. I love getting my meat and dairy fix, watching you cook. I'm plant based. Oh, that's cool. All right, great. Love cooking and baking. A lot of people like cooking and baking. Dude, cooking and baking is probably one of the biggest categories on YouTube, and it's one of the most successfully huge, gigantic, enormous uh, subcategories because people like to watch cooking shows. I mean, television demonstrates it. 
Yeah, the vinegar might be a little bit, a bit of an inhibition on the uh, on the yeast. Yeah, so I would I would tend to probably steer away from the uh, steer away from the vinegar and steer to more. If you didn't have rice wine vinegar, there's no shame in the game if you use red wine vinegar. Okay. Just something to give. This isn't vinegar in the, in the true sense of being like the standard vinegar you use. It's been modified to a great extent, so it doesn't have a lot of those cultures that are left in it. Thing. So that's cool. Plant based. Oh, thank you, Sal, and you're sweet. Hey, classy redhead. Nice to see you. All right, so you can see I'm just kind of waiting for this to touch the uh, touch the top on here. It's really rising nicely. This is going to make a fantastic uh, dough. Oh, you're going to start making dinner. Woo! Cranberry apple pork chops. Yeah. Kathy, I've not made potato bread before. Missy Jen has to restrict herself from... <laughs> Fire, it's fine. <laughs> Pirate, honey, put down the bottle. <laughs> just kidding, just hidden, kidding. Don't, don't, uh, don't have a meltdown on me. For reals, did you see Rosie today? I'm drinking. Let me tell you, Rosie, something. Uh, let's go ahead and let's turn this out, this dough now. Let's get this onto our uh, baking sheet. <laughs> let's also start our oven so we get some heat flowing around here, okay? Remember, you got your skillet in there. I'm going all the way up to 800 degrees. High heat, baby. I want 10 minutes of a... Uh, Eight to ten minutes of a yeast frenzy. I'm going to put on my light and fan too. Convection fan. Oh, oh, you need one after today. Hey, Joey. Thank you. And uh, Joey D is coming up on uh, Sunday. I'll be live streaming making our uh, my lasagna here with a little bit of a different take. I made it before, before we had the uh, fishing... Oh, I guess it was back in August or whatever. So I'm remaking that again. So I made cheddar cheese bread today. That's great. Joe's going to be coming up. Joe is United States Air Force retired. Many, many years. Another one of our true wonderful vets out there. So I can't help it if he's a Boston Red Sox fan. I don't have any control over that. Okay. Some pink strips in that hair. Would, yeah, I think a little pink bow would be good up here, don't you? <laughs> Pirates like it's it's all hell, baby. <laughs> you know what they say, guys. When pirate has a good day, it makes for some. When pirate has a bad day, it makes for some damn good viewing <laughs> that night. <laughs> yeah, it'd be very Doris Day, huh, Kathy? Wouldn't that be it? When I was young and then I asked my mother, what will I be? Will I be happy? Will I be free? Here's what she said to me. K hey, Sarah, Sarah, whatever will be, will be. The future's not ours to see. K okay, Sarah, Sarah. <laughs> Doris Day. <laughs> oh, man. Good old Doris Day. Still going strong, huh? Whatever will be, will be. Huh? I'm a hell of a singer, all right? Uh, America's Sweetheart. Really? 
I thought Marilyn Monroe was America's sweetheart, right? Lighter. That's it, Mouse Toes. Thank you, honey. Lighter's in the air. Here we go. Do I have a damn lighter? From everybody out there, grab your lighter. There we go. Okay, Sarah. Sarah. It's about as irritating as a Barry Manilow concert, right? <laughs> All right, let's get a little bit of flour on the counter here. A little bit of flour. All right, we're going to pull this out. Hi, Grandma. Fired up, Grandma. How are you doing, sweetie? Another one of life's big pleasures, a fired up Grandma. We're going to turn this out. And once again, we are going to, we're, we're not going to really deflate it too much. We're just going to pull it like that. Try to pull it out evenly, just like so. Okay. I have the voice of an angel, don't I? There we go. You're going to turn it one way into the center and then the other way. And then you're going to start rolling from the top, just like that. Okay. Now you're going to pinch that seam. You're going to push the ends in, just like that. And then you're going to start turning it on the counter, just like so. What I'm doing is working my hands underneath of it. I'm shaping it. That's exactly correct, Scarlett. And look at that nice shape. It's got nice tension. So it'll hold this form. It won't get all, it won't flatten out like a hockey puck. Okay, now we can put this onto our. I'm gonna take a few corn. I'm gonna take some cornmeal and pop it on here. Hello, Ibrahim. And I would just say that I do have a lot of people that watch me from uh, the Middle East, Saudi Arabia, and other countries. So if you see somebody come in, and they post something on here. I ask a little bit of forbearance uh, on there. We might not understand what they're posting, but you know, I try to be welcoming. I have a lot of uh, subscribers from the Middle East over there too. So, okay, I'm gonna put some cornmeal on here. All right, just like so. Hello, Cheryl. Yeah, most of the day, yeah, you're not going to use that much rye when you make a Jewish rye bread. The real flavor is going to derive from the caraway seeds. That's where the real favor, flavor, hey, Kyle, how are you, my friend? All right, we're going to now transfer this. Transfer that onto there. And we're going to allow that to do. There might be a little bit of slight stickiness on there. That's fine. Yeah, you always want to mix it. I'm good. Uh, I'm glad to hear that, Kyle. Awesome. Hey, Andrea, how are you, sweetie? Now I've got some. I got some heat working topside here. All right, now I'm just going to take my take my bowl here, dry that out a little bit. And I'm going to let this be under the dome here. Now just keep that tucked in really nicely, just like that. Okay. There's a couple of things you can do. You can use the bowl, or I like to also take I like to also take a pot like this, and I like to just put that right over top of. It. Okay. Kind of gives a nice environment. Thank you, Kyle. I really appreciate that. That's awful sweet of you to say. You can spray your oven. That's what I'm doing, Scarlett. If you go back and I gave an extensive little talk about the importance 
I want people to put a cast iron skillet like I have on the bottom of the uh, oven floor now. And when I go to start this bread in about a half hour or 40 minutes, when I go, to, we go to put this in the oven. I want everybody to take two cups of ice cubes, carefully take a, uh, you know, a hot pad or oven gloves, pull that, pull that skillet out by the handle a little bit, stand back a little bit, put those two cups of, uh, two cups of ice cubes, put that skillet back in really quickly. For 10 minutes, that's gonna provide plenty of moisture for that oven. In addition, I said that you also need to have one of these spray bottles here, okay, so that you can spray the bread. You can even spray it now if you think it might dry up. Nothing wrong with it. I'm going to let that sit to the back there where that will get plenty of heat there coming through. All right, we can set that for about a half hour, and then I think it will be game time in there. It will give me a chance to clean up. So remember two things you need. Butterfingers. You're going to need caraway seeds and you're going to need rye. Okay, there you go. Yes, Scarlett, that's what you want to do. Yeah, save that pickle juice. Yeah. Well, Scarlett, yeah, the um, I've been doing this on YouTube for almost six years that I've been baking. Fired up, Grandma, if you don't have a baking stone, and I say the same thing when people were making a um, blind baking a pie, and that's a pie that you put together that has a top crust and a bottom crust on it, okay? And you cannot bake that independently. What's the biggest problem when people make pies? The bottom dough is not cooked. If you take your pie plate, your Pyrex pan, your, your uh, pie pan, and if you start that on a baking stone that's been preheated, or you put that on the bottom of the oven floor with a piece of foil down first for 10 minutes, being very careful, then after 10 minutes, take that pie up to the top rack. You'll never have a crust that's underdone again. Why? Because you're blasting so much heat into the bottom of that uh, into the bottom of that dough. Now, why do you want to do that? Because if you put that pie, uh, that's uh, yeah, we got we got our own little pug, and then we have this dog from next door that hangs out. Hey, Rose Water Spring, if you were to just take your pie and put it in the oven traditionally, the bottom never gets quite done enough. Reason being is that heat has to penetrate that metal pan at 350 degrees or whatever your baking temperature is. It has to penetrate the glass pan, the glass pie pan, or the glass pie, the, the metal pie pan, till it even gets to your crust. That's like a 10 or 15 minute proposition. What happens, the top of your pie is done and the bottom's like, whoa, we're not done yet. The party's still raging down here. Sorry, lights out. Put your pies, put your breads on as direct heat as you can get for the first five to 10 minutes. I'm not saying be an idiot and just walk away. I'm saying at least five minutes and I'm sure I'll do 10 today on this stone. At what, 800 degrees? Grandma, it makes an incredible difference when you're baking. Because one of life's displeasures is getting a pie that the bottom of that pie is just straight dough that you're eating. I like my pie to be flaky on the bottom and flaking on the top. Hi, Harvey. Kyle, Kyle Farpoy, I'll tell you what, every day, Kyle, we woke up every morning for breakfast. We had a pie on the table. We didn't, we didn't afford breakfast cereal and all that stuff, but I'm saying we had a pie. Whether it was a Jeff Davis pie, uh, you know, a cream, uh, vanilla cream, chocolate, every morning, peach, whatever. Thank you, Connie. I think it's a great tip. 
I think baking is one of those things that people can exchange from an experience. That's great. Kathy says, I have a homemade pumpkin pie. You can go back in my playlist on this channel, on the Rosie Murphy channel, and you can see, you can see if not 100, 120 baking black and white cookies in 2013. I mean, just baking, baking, baking galore. And the things that I've learned over time. It's fun to go back sometimes. It's also painful. <laughs> Still working on computers. So, very good. Just turn this a little bit. This dome is actually, yeah, it's actually helping to keep that heat. And this is the part, we don't want to rush this rise, this very last rise. So this is the fun part of baking, too, is you get to hang out and get to talk to people. And uh, it's, you know, if you, if you were to have the ladies or guys over and just, you know, if they were into baking, it would be a lot of fun. Don't forget, yeah, Kyle's like, I like people who bake and give me some. Yeah, that's that little dog is named Georgie, Kyle. Georgie, he's a mix between a uh, boxer and a pug. I'll bring him over to say hi to you guys. Remember, get one of these fence scrapers. These things are awesome. Okay. Friday night, we'll be baking for a mom of three boys. We'll be making um, a vegan dessert. I haven't quite figured out what yet. But we'll be doing, she's requesting something vegan. We'll also be raising money for Lupus Foundation. Okay. Because mom of three boys, uh, mom of three boys deals with lupus, as does Pam. Pam and Ricky and shoot the shit. So it's a good chance for us to to make a difference uh, and do something positive in the community. Okay, so, all right. Yeah, sure. Well, I'm pretty happy with the way most of the stuff turns out. Remember now, your your skillet should be in there. That baby should be at 800 degrees too by the time that bread goes in. The two vegans getting a fight, is it called beef? <laughs> That's cute, JK. <laughs> uh, I haven't really had a cup of coffee today. Did y'all ever use these things? These uh, Starbucks instant medium roast coffee? I got kind of hankering for a cup of coffee right now. So while we're while we're letting this rise off to under the dome. Yeah. They had these on sale, two of these packs. You get like 26 for 10 bucks or something of these. And it's got these little little sachets. Fart boy's like, no, I just have them make money. Well, Fart Boy. The difference between you and me, my friend, is that you are wealthy, right? Me, I'm a schlub, so I would die. I mean, you got to remember, Fart Boy, I grew up in the days when you just went into a place at the corner, the corner diner, and you just asked for a cup of coffee, 50 cents a cup of coffee, right? Now we go into Starbucks. It's like being on the floor of the fucking new commodity exchange in in chicago right i'm looking around there's people jumping around uh, they, you know they're looking at the big board i'll have the dollar double frappe screwy fuck number two with the espresso and extra latte cream hold the cinnamon warm that up a little bit please thank you that'll be nine dollars and twenty cents you know what i'd be like nine one one state your emergency well we got one of these we got one of these 1950s chicks in here, right? <laughs> hey, Susan, how are you? <laughs> A schlub. <laughs> yeah, I don't get into all that coffee. I don't understand. I don't even pretend. I'm embarrassed to even. I'm embarrassed to even stand there and order. So we're gonna try a cup of this coffee while we're waiting here. The ladies get to scream, my nice cattle, huh? Check. 
check this, make sure this baby's rising good. Yeah, it's looking good under there. <sighs> yeah, Dunkin' Donuts. See, I really like Dunkin' Donuts coffee, but but people try to shame me because I like Dunkin' Donuts Donuts uh, coffee, right? Mom best says I like black coffee. I don't want anything messing up my seat. To me, I like cream and sugar. So how much does it cost salon to maintain that? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Mr. President. Happy birthday to you. I tried to put one of those beauty marks on one time. And it just looked like a bird crapped on me. <laughs> I got to figure out where the hell to put them. <laughs> uh, you know what's not rated good is Starbucks. It's dirty with pesticides and mold. Okay, uh, Lisa. <clears throat> Harvey, yeah. Nice to see you today. Robin Router. Mwah. Let's give this a whirl, huh? Shall we? Actually, this stuff was, you know, uh, Susan, I just, I uh, mean, this is rare. I really don't have, uh, like I say, Starbucks is not kind of my go to place. This oven's getting nice and hot now. All right. Uh, thank you, Ibrahim. I really appreciate that. Thank you, sweetie. Yeah, you know, Free Birdie, we have someone uh, in the community, Colleen Hope. She has a uh, coffee farm. On Kona, she's sending us some of her uh, some of her product, which she didn't have to. I didn't ask for it. I I always feel ashamed because I like to watch her all. There's there's Colleen. There she is. Oh, you needed to tune up. I'm glad all is well, honey. There's Colleen Hope. She does. Uh, she has a coffee farm on the Big Island. So. Give her a sub up. I'm hoping she does a lot more content about the process. That uh, the process. She's got a big place on the. She's got a big place on the Big Island. So very fascinating. I, that's what I love about YouTube. People that are putting up content and stuff. It's great. Oil and water. We're having a fantastic harvest this year. That's great. Yeah, I was very, I was very excited when Colleen uh, came. You can look at some of her videos. She showed that beautiful, uh, look like a block of black lava, black sand beach there. There's Domino, the other dog from next door. Is like a, Domino. You're saying hi to everybody. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Huh? What are you doing? Are you saying hi to everybody? Huh? Are you dancing? Are you dancing? Are we dancing? Are we dancing? Good boy. That's like the uh, smoke, smoke alarm. That always goes off because of the high heat in there. So I don't even have anything in the oven. This thing's always a pain in the ass. Do you prefer a French press? Yeah, I just, I don't, uh, I'm going to go to drying shed for more. Yeah, I hope that you get some more video, Colleen. So make sure you, you sub up Colleen Hope. Fascinating what some people do here on, uh, on YouTube. 
Let's take another peek here. Looking good. I'm going to give that a little bit of oil spray right now. I have a percolator. I take a percolator when I'm camping. I use a percolator. You guys have seen me when I'm out boondocking. If we ever get, if we ever got some good weather, we've had this rainy spell. I'd be out doing the overnight in the van again, doing my hangouts from the road. Domino, are you good boy today? Huh? You looking around for food? This is like Domino. He's like a Eddie Haskell from Leave It to Beaver, right? He's like the kid that comes over. It's always, uh, always, in, always insinuates himself into dinner, right? All right, let's give this a try. Give this a whirl. I like to have a little milk in my coffee. Smart dog. Yeah, Mama Beth, I've actually taught him to shake hands already. See, he doesn't get any to shake Paul. He doesn't get any attention next door. That's the problem. They're always away. So he scales that he scales that six foot fence to come over and hang out. You hope I drop what? What's that, Kathy? Yeah, he's adopted us because he doesn't get any attention next to us. Is that right, Jim? <coughs> There's the Missy. Mom and Beth said, hey, Missy Jim. Oh, that Starbucks shit. I don't know. I just bought this to just try. They had a promotional. Ah, it's pretty darn good. Pretty darn good. Ah, I just wanted to try it. Yeah, Kathy's vintage TV said hi, Mr. Jack. Hey, Kathy. Kind of a gloomy day today. You know, it's a little bit of sunshine, and then the next layer of clouds comes in. Yeah, normally we don't have any uh, weather issues, but we got something that's coming up from Southern California, like the remnants of a hurricane. Thank you, Ibrahim. There's Joey D. Says hi, Jen. Hi, Joey D. Joey D's going to be eating good on uh, that's why I saw, yeah, he'll be eating that. Uh, what are you doing? Like lasagna. lasagna. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Missy Jen's favorite uh, favorito over there. The lasagna. That's her favorite. Although that fried chicken was pretty rice. Right. Yeah, it was pretty good, yeah. How about that honey cornbread? That was pretty awesome. <laughs> that was the Hi, best. Hi, Scarlett. Scarlett. That was the best darn cornbread I ever had in my life and that's that's saying something in there so that's saying something yeah. it's the same but I love me the cornbread yeah it that's uh, really cooking with Bob that was the dog it was I on mean. the other side of the fence the black lab when I dropped my GoPro I was being nosy and filming next door and I dropped my GoPro on the other side of my kitchen I tried to reach my hand through the and I finally, Jen just went through the gate at the front and just picked up the GoPro and brought it back to me. No, the dog I was real. The fence, no? I, I thought you went through the walk around the front. No, so. I reached under the get under the fence. So I don't know. Best earned cornbread. I'm telling you what, Bunny Cha Cha. You add a quarter of a cup of honey into that baby. He reduces sugar to you know a. From a, from a half a cup, you knock that back to a quarter cup with a quarter cup of sugar. Yeah, we became great friends. You see, laying on the floor back here. 
Right. I mean, it's like I uh, couldn't pick a more inconvenient location, but that's the way it goes. Do you have any leftover cornbread? Yeah, no, I didn't have it. That cornbread went like that. That cornbread was phenomenal. Yeah. It was wolfed down in one day. That was just wolfed in them. <laughs> just wolfed in. Right? Wolfed in. How's our bread doing? Better put our timer on it so I'm not sleeping here. Right? I think we'll see what about 20 more minutes. Kelly, how are you, sweetie? Kelly, we're all booked up for Vegas the uh, 13th. Thursday coming down the 13th. Okay. Oh, that's rising real nice now. Okay. Rising real good. Uh, oh, the honey was just phenomenal. Wasn't that nice? That, um, look at this. Look at this. Take a good look at it. This is the story of my life. Just well, you won't be easy. That's easy to come over anymore. Yeah, I think we'll try to do Friday night at the Piranha Club down there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Make sure you can uh, make sure you can put in Kelly to get off that Friday night. Uh, Mom and Beth's world cornbread mom, so good, right? This is what J.D. Diva sent us from the uh, from out in the Central Valley. Wonderful. This is what we used to make the cornbread. It was just just phenomenal. Just phenomenal. No, I don't think Bird's is coming, Kelly. Uh, let me go ahead. And Bergs ain't coming. Not that I know. Right, take my progesterone today. Mm. Oh, these dog loves us over here. Domino. Domino. Good boy. You shake ball? Shake? Shake ball? Good boy. Huh? You shake ball? Huh? What are you doing? What are you doing? Huh? You show everybody hi? You show everybody hi? This is a dog that can jump a six foot fence, right? Uh, yeah, that honey's beautiful. <clears throat> well, you know, I think Kelly, as far as Elvis goes, he's got bigger fish to fry. Uh, you know, I think he's he's trying to get into the working life now, and uh, I think he should be working. You know? you know, I always get a lot of blowback when Elvis goes to uh, Vegas. I don't know how Bobby will feel about it. Who knows? You know, Bobby has had that theory that it's nice to get Elvis out of his tin can once a year, and you know, so I don't know. All right, let's check our baking time. Let's let's check our recipe here. Man, that alert scared the hell out of me on my phone this morning. Let's see here. I know you told me, but I'm still not prepared at that moment. Okay. Yeah, we're not. We're yeah, about thirty to forty minutes, I think. About 50 minutes all together. Yeah, I know you got some blowback. Well, I think he's, uh, I don't know what he's doing. So, I mean, he's working. <clears throat> you know, so I, Bobby had the theory that once a year, Elvis should be, should be around people and, uh, you know, get out of that van just for mental health and all that stuff. So, You know, plus he's always, you know, he's always a big show down in uh, down in Vegas. Oh yeah, was it? Chen oh, you thought it was a tsunami warning? Warning? Yeah. So. Yeah, I know you got some blowback, Kelly. I got some blowback because you got blowback.
make sure you have your uh, cup ready to get your uh, two two cups of ice cubes, okay? It's almost showtime. I'm just going to get, when the time comes, I'm going to grab about two cups of ice cubes and get ready to pour them into the skillet when we put the bread in, okay? That's really rising beautifully now. We really can't rush this part or you're going to have a hockey puck. So who bought you those lovely diamonds on your neck? This is something that I went to the Diamond and Gem Fair. If you look at the video from, I think, March of 2017 or something, when I first used my Olympus camera, I went to a gem fair at the, uh, went to a gem fair at the uh, county fairgrounds here, Sonoma County Fair, and uh, I really liked it. I wanted something that hung lower into my cleavage. Hi, Nicole. Nice to see you, sweetie. I wanted something that was lower down to my uh, kind of between there, but I, I just took what I could for this. So I, um, I don't know. I think I paid like 19 bucks for it. But what's weird in that video, if you go back and look at that video from the Gem Fair, and if you put Gem Fair, F-A-I-R-E, into the search box, there was actually a lot of controversy on that video because it looked like somebody stole something off the table while I was videoing. It looked like he took something and put it into his into his pocket. So yeah, we caught a uh, we caught a live shoplifting, or did we? You know, it's like he did something and then pulled it back and just did. But was was he touching something and then just pulling his hand back? Thank you. Or was he grabbing something on there? Let me see if I can. Let me see if I can link that video on the side. Here, let me see. You guys can be the judge. Like I said, I've I had up to ten thousand videos at one time on the channel, so it's I've gotten a lot of weird stuff over time. I'm down to about six thousand now. I had to pull out a lot to con conform with the new YouTube uh, terms of service and stuff. Let me see here. Stuff where people were getting spanked and all that. Let me see. Here, the boss, when we were making moonshine, and the boss would chase us around with the wooden spoon, all kinds of stuff. So, let's see. It's a little slow. Okay, yeah, this is about a five minute uh, video. I'm going to put the link. It was April 30th, 2017. This is when I first got my. Uh, let me copy this link. I first got my. I was first using my Olympus camera that I've since sold. I'll put this, you can watch the video and see if this guy really did steal something or not. There's the video. So I report, you decide. That's also the show where I bought the necklace and, and uh, showed it. I think it's around the two minute mark, something like that. So it was weird because some of the comments down below were like, uh, uh, somebody say, take a look in about two, two, two minutes and 20 seconds and watch the guy. Did he pick up a piece in pocket? I played it over and over. What do you think? So kind of weird. You know, so there was a lot of controversy on the video about whether the person really ripped off something or not. Okay, Mama, Mama Beth, we'll be throwing this bread in in a very short period of time here. That's really rising nicely now. I think our time, our time is going to be perfect. We've got about, uh, 
15 more minutes and this goes into the oven. I live in the North Bay. I live in Sonoma County in Santa Rosa. Easy fun shine. E easy fun shine. Okay, Mama Beth, we're just a couple minutes, uh, 15 minutes from popping this bad boy in the oven. So we got our oven temperature up. Yeah, uh, Susan, Mama Beth does good, uh, does really nice streams. She made some uh, fried pies. The Poof, how are you, honey? Mm, I had to have a laugh with the Poof on the Twitter last night. <laughs> it's funny, uh, man, he's like, La Poof, hit the road, Jack. I'm like, whoa, what did La Poof do? <laughs> <laughs> uh, she was really funny on uh, on Twitter. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, Kelly K. Did that guy steal that or not? You know, did he steal that stone or not? Some of the people said no. He just was. He picked up something and looked at it, and then uh, he. Um, put it back. Oh, yeah, Walnut Creek is nice. Yeah. It's about the uh, six days till the anniversaries of the fires here, ironically, on Mama Beth's birth, Mama Bear's birthday when Santa Rosa burned to the ground. He was clutching, grabbing, and switching. Yeah, I don't know. Some, you know, some people got good eyes. There you see the guy probably pawned a stone or something, popped that stone in his pocket. Okay, looked again. Colleen says, I looked again and he didn't have anything in his fingers. See, it was very controversial on there. Yeah, so. Kind of strange, though, you know. <laughs> Funny's like. Mm. <laughs> Kelly's like, I used to do card tricks. It's pretty interesting, though, at the fair. Uh, look, at, just scroll up, LaPouf. Back in April 2017, somebody was complimenting me on uh, on my necklace today. And I uh, said, I remember where I bought it at the gem fair. And I also remember something else happened. There was a controversy of whether I, whether I caught somebody shoplifting on video or not. So I put the link in the, um, uh, up above on the, uh, on the side chat there so you can, you can decide for yourself about the two-minute mark to the two-minute and 30-second mark. You can see if this guy stole something off the table at the gym fair. So that's what we were talking about there. Yeah, that was the alarm from the president, right? That was a na nationwide test. Yeah, why walk away so fast? Yeah, Kelly, there's a lot of questions on that. So... I had a lot of people say, why didn't you report him? I mean, I got no idea. You know, I didn't see it at the time. Dancing Dawn, how are you, sweetie? Nice to see you. Uh, Dawn, are you in Vegas? I think Dawn's the one in Vegas. Mrs. Zombie, nice to see you, sweetie. Oh, we're really rising good now. <clears throat> I've seen if Dawn's the one in Vegas. Or is it Dawn OG? We got a couple Dawns. So, yep, Donnie cares about you. Yeah, it was a presidential alert test. So. Oh, okay. Just couldn't get that organized, huh? Um, Dawn in the hot tub, baby. Motorboat time. We're gonna be uh, we're gonna be in Vegas the 13th of December. We're coming back on the 16th. Okay. We're leaving really early on the 13th. We're gonna drive down so we have our own vehicle. It ain't much of a drive from Santa Rosa. About seven hours. And uh, yeah, yeah, gonna be having a good time. 
So you can motor boat away, baby. Woo! Yeah, nice to see Mrs. Zombie. I'm making Oreo balls and more Buckeyes. Yeah. Yeah, I got it, Scarlet. I sure as hell got that. I jumped up my phone. And said, Whoa. Yeah, we're going to have a good time, Dawn. So you're welcome to hang out. Friday night, we're going to go down to the uh, Piranha Club. And that's usually we get there about uh, 11 o'clock at night, 10 or 11. And we just go till they close, you know, about 3 in the morning. And it's like, uh, you know, dancing, Rosie in the gold dress or the black dress. What's the advice, Bunny? What do you need advice on, honey? Yeah, even the cat hid behind the cats. Oh, Carlos, what another wonderful day. Carlos Martinez, Latino Heat, with another regaling us more of his tales. You think this? You think the real deal is coming through soon, huh? You think all the FEMA camps and things that are being set up. Now, let's go get an egg right now, okay? We're going to go get uh, an egg, and we're going to uh, beat that egg a little bit, Okay. Get yourself one egg and get yourself a get yourself a bowl. Crack that, crack that egg in there. Just like so. Okay. And then beat that egg. Put a real tiny little bit of uh, water in there. Just a little bit and then get, get a fork. Beat that real good. Okay, and also get your caraway seeds ready. We're going to be blasting the top of this with caraway seeds, okay? We've got an oven at 800 degrees right now. Okay. Get that. Beat it like it stole something from you. There we go. That's it. Okay, there we go. All right, we got our nice brush here. I'm going to go ahead now and bring this over here. We're going to give this an initial brush. Don't forget your pot for putting your ice cubes, transferring your ice cubes, okay? Here we go. Look at how beautifully that's doubled in size. That's just a beautiful looking loaf right there. We're going to go ahead right here. Okay. All right, just like that. Now we're going to get our knife. I got a really super sharp knife here. You can you can buy something that's called a lame, L A M E. French lame, which is like a razor blade in a holder. And you're going to make three, three diagonal slashes here. Okay? Three parallel, I mean, not diagonal. Okay? Just like so. We're going to make it about a half an inch deep, these cuts. This is going to allow this to get some more oven spring, too. All right, so that really opens up nicely. Now we're going to get, give it one more overcoating here. And then about 10 minutes before it's done, we're going to save that egg wash because we can give it another coating. Now what you want to do it allows that, that allows for expansion that oven spring. Now you want to get uh, get your caraway seeds. And you want to blast them right on the top. Okay, just like so. Just like that. 
All right. Now don't don't knock it around too much. You don't want to deflate it. Be very gentle with it, okay? All right. Now this this is where things are like a ballet. It's got to be coordinated. You've got to be careful not to burn yourself when you're handling the ice and the steam, okay? All right. Oh, I'll make something nice, Colleen. You bet, honey. All right, I have two cups of ice cubes here. I'm going to go ahead and give this one spray here. Okay, and into the oven she goes right on to that, uh, right on to that, um, the hell do you call that, baking stone. Okay, right there, right on, and here goes. All right, there we go. Now that's creating a ton of, ton of steam in there, okay? I'm not much of a macadamia nut person myself. I kind of find them good, a little oily. Hi, Gina. Nice to see you. Fruit pig, how are you? Put your, uh, put your timer for about eight minutes. Remember, I'm at very high temperature here, okay? Those ice cubes hit that hot skillet in there, and they're creating steam. And they're going to keep creating steam for about five minutes or so to retard that crust from setting. Very, very important, okay? All right, so I've set my timer for about eight minutes here. All right. Yeah, that's creating a beautiful load of steam right in there, okay? We're baking... Um, Gina, we're making uh, authentic delicatessen style Jewish rye bread today. That Starbucks instant wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. Uh, yeah, we started about one o'clock. I did the uh, I started the dough last night. And got ahead. So yeah, it's gonna be really excellent. So I can't wait till I smell those caraway seeds. That's it. La poop. That humidity from the ice is what makes the bread rise and what's make it nice and moist. It also the thing that it really does is it present prevents that crust from forming as long as possible. Now two minutes have gone by. I'm gonna spray the bread real quickly again. Okay. Oh, it's nice and steamy in there. It's like a sauna, so that's good. I'm not Jewish. No, I'm not. I'm a, I'm a born and raised Catholic. Yeah, I'm making good time. Uh, let's see. I am Irish, Spanish, Alsatian, and a little bit of German. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I love it when we do baking hangouts because I learn a lot from you guys too. Different hacks and things. I've got, I've got people on here. Scarlet, uh, Scarlet's been uh, Scarlet Poppy Field's been baking for forty years, so she knows a lot of the stuff. That's uh, a lot of the ins and outs. I appreciate the thumbs up. If you take a second to hit the thumbs up button, if you're enjoying the stream, that would be a nice, a nice thing to do today. Missy Jen would do that. Smash, smash that thumbs up button. That's it. Love of Ruben too. So we making we making some artisan style. <laughs> Kelly, <laughs> uh, it's okay, Mama Beth. Kelly's all right. Kelly's Kelly's a sweetie doll. So I've known Kelly for years. Actually, Kelly should have a wrench because she streams too. She live streams so. No offense, Mama Bear. I just you don't really know, but Kelly's been a pal of mine for years. No problem, Mama Beth. Kelly, you have a wrench now when you come back from your uh, vacation. <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> oh my God, Kelly. Kelly, Kelly, Kelly. Kelly, you're thinking of Helga on Hogan's Heroes. That's who you're thinking about. I need to get the long blonde wig with the uh, pigtails. <sighs> Fraulein. Oh, I love rye bread too. How are you doing, Evelyn? Nice to see you. Evelyn Langdon in the house. <laughs> Mama Beth was like uh, protecting the perimeter here. <laughs> Ooh, and if y'all haven't subbed up Mama Beth, she's going to be doing a stream with uh, chicken and dumplings today. I want you all to make sure you sub her up and show some love. She's one of my favorite people here on planet YouTube. She is an accomplished cook, an accomplished baker, and a really good chat stream host, too. The Swedish blonde gone, yeah. People think um, people that meet me in real life think I'm part Mexican too, but it's, it's really the Spanish because my eyes are too damn big. That's the problem. Real big mouth and real big eyes. So yeah, Jen's doing good. Having a quiet day. Dare I go over and check the mail? Oh God! Look, we're about uh, three minutes in. I mean, about uh, seven minutes in. We don't want anything to burn, but that is really looking beautiful. The ice cubes are still going strong in there. The ice cubes are still going strong. I don't know. I just, I never liked the sides of my eyes. I always thought that they were, my mouth is too big and my eyes are too big. <laughs> no gluten free. Yeah, I've just enjoyed that. Yeah, I had to do a little peek just to make sure that uh, it wasn't burning on the bottom there. So so we're good. Go back five more minutes at high temperature. Jorge in Buenos Aires. Bienvenidos, Jorge. Como estas? In Argentina. In Buenos Aires. Huh? Buenos Aires is, is uh, Ciudad Muy Bonita. Huh? It's... Uh, it's Harry de Sud, Sud America, huh? It's the Paris of South America. Scarlet, my dough never deflates, honey. <laughs> my dough don't deflate, right? Yeah, I'd go to the top of the world restaurant. Where is that, Kelly? Is that the... Um, You never even ate. Is that on top of the stratosphere, Kelly? Because we invited you to go to dinner with us, so the invitation is there again this year. You're welcome to dine with us on our dime if you want to uh, do that. That would be great. Now, we actually had the pleasure of hanging out with uh, Kelly in uh, Las Vegas. Yeah, we'd go, we could go up there. The first night in, we usually like to go to Main Street Station. It's just simple, it's easy, and the food is decent. And then we do something fancier for Saturday, Friday night, and then Saturday we do, we just kind of love. We went to a pizza place. Yeah, the pizza place wasn't bad. We went to uh, Pizza Rock in downtown, uh, downtown Vegas off of Fremont Street. So, hey, Poplar Picker, our bread is in the oven, babe. We're about a few minutes away from turning down the heat. You should give Bob a good one time also, huh? Bobka, huh? How you doing today, Mel? People say, Rosie, how do you stand on your feet, baby? When I go get my second butt fill with the fat, you can't sit down for a month. I used to do seven, eight-hour hangouts standing up the whole time. No, it's not chocolate Jewish bread. It's a traditional, it's traditional delicatessen style uh, Jewish rye bread. Yeah, Dancing Dawn is in Vegas, Kelly. 
Absolutely, Mrs. Zombie. I would love, I'd love to meet you and Mr. Zombie in person. Now I'm going to back the heat down to about 400 degrees. I'm going to give you guys a little peek at the bread now. All right, don't don't go yet, Colleen. Let me give you a little peek, honey. How nice that looks, huh? Okay, I've now backed the heat off. Didn't that look good? Didn't that look good? Now I'm just gonna do. We're gonna do our usual Halloween hangout. I guess I'll be in the the uh, naughty witch with the corset and the pointy hat and all that stuff. So you know me, Callie. All right, you didn't look good. Uh, didn't that look good, Mama Beth? I mean, that really looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna add about 35. I'm gonna do about 30 minutes here on there. We're gonna add about 30 minutes. Yeah, didn't that look good? Didn't that look like it got a lot of oven spring, Cassidy? What do you think, honey? What do you think? Hmm? Could I make you a nice Reuben sandwich or a nice pastrami on Jewish rye? Yeah, we will try again, and next time, very little rye flour, the rest white. Yeah, you want to use no more than about a cup and a half of rye flour, including the starter, to three and a three and a quarter cups of white flour. Yeah. Oh, you got your dirty cop costume, huh? Cassie's like, woo! It's gorgeous. Yeah, I've got, I've got like, uh, let me see these things. I got some darn thing here. I don't know where in the hell that thermometer went. I had a little internal thermometer, but I don't know where in the hell it went. Here it is. I don't want to smash. I don't want to smash my candy thermometer. Yeah. I got that little uh, Taylor one. Let me see if they give it. Let me see if they give an internal. Hey, Eddie. Aloha, Colleen. Nice to see you, honey. Oh, uh, thank you, Shannon. Nice to see you. Kelly's like, uh, how tall are you, Kelly? When I'm looking up at Kelly like this. <laughs> Hi, Kelly. <laughs> and she wears those. She had those high boots on. If you look at Las Vegas last uh, December, our trip, the whole playlist there, you can see Kelly at the uh, Piranha Club and stuff with this. So take a look here. Internal temp of about 200 degrees. So I think today I'll try sticking this in. What do you guys think? I think today I'll try putting this in. You need to model that costume. Yeah, I, you can look at last year's Halloween. You can put it Halloween in my search box year after year after year. Okay, I'm putting that. This is kind of cool. I'm going to put that... Uh, I'm putting that uh, I'm putting that thermometer in today. We're going to go to about 200 degrees. I've never used a thermometer in my life ever. Bunny's like, I need to grow a thicker skin conflict on YouTube and Twitter. I thought you did a nice video today, Bunny. Kelly, you're the one who was dancing with it. That's the one. That's Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Believe me, over time you get a much thicker skin, and you you understand there's no percentage in engaging in uh, engaging in battle on YouTube. I did a video this morning about that. You're welcome, Bunny. Uh, 
Oh my God, today's mail. Oh no. Bills, 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 bills. Yeah, Kelly's a lot of fun too. Kelly's a lot of fun too. Domino, what are you doing? Huh? Come here, Domino. What you doing, huh? What are you doing? Are you being a good boy today? Are you a good boy? Huh? You a good boy today? Huh? Boy? Yes, you are. You're a good boy. Where's Millie Vanilli, huh? I'm going to get a little bit of cheese here. Don't hate me because I got some Safeway cheese. I mean, we grew up on government cheese. Remember when the government gave away the cheese blocks? Not you guys. You're too young. Government cheese. Government cheese. Government cheese. <laughs> kind of like you didn't get me drunk enough last year. <laughs> and I'll tell you though, we got back though. Kelly, you and I had hell to pay after that trip. I know. I don't know, Robin. You know, safe sunny side. Sharp chatter. It's in my budget range, so you know. Yeah, we always had the government cheese. Yeah. Government cheese, baby. <laughs> I don't think that's something that you want to announce too much, Kelly. <laughs> that's something, thankfully, I've never seen. Hmm. George is enjoying some government cheese. Yeah, we really had a hell of a pay after that trip. <laughs> I'm going fun for your PTSD. That's funny, Sue. My God. <laughs> Kelly had these hangouts, did we or didn't we? Did it happen or didn't? The tell all. And it kind of blew up on her. <laughs> Kelly's like, my life has changed forever. Mm. Yeah, Jen's, Jen's a baby. She never had the joys of government cheese. There she is. Chrissy. Hello, Jen. Hello. Jen's like, did you do the chores? Hey, Allison. Nice to see you, honey. Allison B's Flex Friendly Kitchen. Nice to see you, honey. You know what I can smell already, Jen? I smell, I smell live bread now. Smell the air? I smell caraway seeds. Everybody's saying hi to you. Hi, everybody. The cheese went right down my front. You ladies ever been on the gun range and all of a sudden you get a hot cartridge go right down? Ooh! That happens to me every damn time. One time I'm reaching down in, my tits hanging out on the range and everything. I'm like, holy hell. <laughs> Side chat slut. Nice to see you, honey. Gina Smith said hi, Jen. Everybody said hi. Side chat slut said hi. Yeah, if you take away Elvis's YouTube channel, he's a fun guy to hang out with. I would agree. 
Man, this kitchen smells so good. You see that bread? Wow. Take a little peek. Oh, now that looks. Oh, it's That like you get in a Jewish deli, you know? That looks there. like uh, something I would get at a. Oh, that's cool. Baker in Germany. Reminds me of the cookers. It smells good. I smell good. The whole kitchen's starting to smell like caraway seeds now. I'll just say hi to everybody for a couple of minutes. Somebody, while I like it. <coughs> what the clinic is and hot on. Yeah, ASMR videos are the best thing. Eh? Well, I just press right now the ice cream bars. Hi, Kelly. And hi, Free Birdie. Hi, Allison. I, I have been actually outside. I've been trying to figure out a way to prevent Domino from jumping the fence. So I put up a board on top of the fence and made it another inch and a half taller. And then I lured him with hot dogs back home. And then I watched him and he just walked around. You can see between the fence, between the boards, and he just walked around and oh, he jumped over the fence again. He pulled himself up, even though the fence then uh, an inch and a half longer, so I took the board back down. Hi, Dancing Don. You sent a little something in the mail. It'll go to the P.O. Box on Friday. Oh, that's okay. awesome. Thank you, Don. Thank you so much, Don. Jesus, we are, we're going to meet Don in Vegas. So. Okay, awesome. It's going to be great to meet Don. And hi, Sean Britt. Nice to see you. Yeah, I know he wants to live on the ranch, but he pretty much really does. <laughs> Who's that? Uh, Domino. He oh really yeah, Domino much. just he's he's really. I mean, really he comes. Uh, he comes. He's already at the door in the morning when I get up, and he 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 leaves by the time we go to bed, and then he comes during the night and. <laughs> Yeah, I finished my space girl from planning trip wax and uh, I had the back door open to let some air in and all of a sudden he just comes walking in the back door, you know. Thought it had to be uh one thirty. Open and private, okay. Oh, okay, Dawn, I sure will. Okay, honey. I sure will. Shauna, yes, how are you, sweetie? Shauna was so much Shauna was so fun last night. No, I'll let you know, Don when it's that's here and uh, everybody agreed we love Sean and Spreckles. <clears throat> well, I got all the trash cans in. I got the neighbor's trash cans in, our trash cans in. I take the neighbor's trash cans in too because the night's over, over there is a uh, Smell that caraway now. Ooh, man, the whole house smells like caraway. Ooh, that smells good. Joey. Well, he used to like know how to climb back, and he does know in a panic attack how to climb back over. Um, I thank you, Don. Thank you so much. Much appreciated. Yeah, my. My dad would have been uh, 82, actually, this year. I mean, yesterday, sorry. First. 
and October, the October, uh, on the October 1st. Yes, my dad just turned ago. 89. God, the days are going by so fast. Your dad just turned 89. Hi, Gypsy. Hey, Gypsy, how are you doing, Good sweetie? Job. I'd be happy to give everyone a few freckles. Yeah, I think they're very perfect. I think they yeah. complement you perfectly, Sean. All right, we'll go eat your things. Thanks mm -hmm. for uh, stopping mm -hmm. by. I only got about 15 more minutes. The bread will come out. We'll wrap it up. I'll get Mrs. Jen to take a picky later, and we'll make it the thumbnail today. It's good. Why do you like my pants? Mm -hmm. The box cover it all. Mm -hmm. I, I know. The common exhibition is that. No, don't be, don't be sorry. <coughs> I, um, I appreciate it that you even, uh, said that you wished a happy birthday. That was very kind of you. I'm very appreciative of it. So I, uh, the days fly by so, so fast, the years go by. Fast, yeah, I said Oh, okay. And, uh, I don't even know sometimes what day it is anymore. Domino is very protective of the property here now. Domino is our guard dog. Guard dog now. Hey, not today. Hey, nice not to today. see you. Let's take another look at our thermometer here. We're up, we're up at 150. We've got to go up to about 200. So we're going to need, we're going to need all of our time here for 15 more minutes. Nice to see you, not today. We want to bring that up to an internal temperature of 200 degrees. So. While that's going off, you guys can talk on the side, Jen. I'm just going to clean up a little bit here. I don't ever like to bake and leave a mess for Jen. <clears throat> I don't think I'm going to put any more egg wash on it. It looks perfect. So. Sheba, thank you, sweetie. How are you today? Sheba was the inspiration for my chicken pot one. Nice to see you, Sheba. Uh, thank you. Uh, you just call me Rosie. You don't have to call me Miss Rosie. <laughs> even, though, even though I'm an old crow. All right. Appreciate that. Thank you, honey. Hey, 16 flower child. Hola, hola, aloha. I'm 16 going on 18. Yes, yeah, great. Jesus it says I'm great now that I'm home from work. There you go. I couldn't believe uh couldn't believe Wally World had this big Pyrex bowl on sale. It was like six dollars for this beautiful big beautiful bowl. Oh, I know that, Sean. I'm just, I'm, I'm pulling your leg, girl. All right. Yep, we need to achieve an internal temperature of 200 degrees. Oh, I'm just having a little bit of soda here, that's all. I drank it up last night. Had a great time on last night hanging out. It was so much fun. Don't forget Friday night we'll be baking for Lupus and for Mom of Three Boys.
first uh, thunderstorm this year. Yeah, we don't, we just have kind of a partly cloudy. We haven't really got any rain today. I um, can't wait till this. Uh, yeah, she, but no problem. You can always watch them. Yeah, they were great fun. You helped make it that, uh, Shauna. Tremendously fun having you on uh, Hangouts. You've got such a great sense of humor. <clears throat> John is one of our girls of the boys. All right. Our ladies of the boys. Yeah, thank you, Flower. I don't like to leave Matt. Yeah, another tsunami. I don't like to leave Jen on Matt here. We're just about done, Jenny, Jen. I'm sorry, honey. You got to sleep somewhere. We'll be doing it again Friday night. And that's Friday nights are usually insane. I had Mama Bear on her hangout kind of railing again today. All right. <laughs> yeah, so Friday nights are always like, uh, ooh, every, I always have an open hangout, so everybody's welcome. So. But I reckon if I had to do it all over again, I might have just kept uh, kept things simple with uh, just Mama Bear on the hangout. Because it was making her cake and stuff. Oh, you actually slept some. That's great. I'll be prepare my turkey. There you go. And uh, come winter time, I might try to push them back to about 8 p.m. on the West Coast, which will be 11 o'clock on the East Coast. So, yeah, stickers, kind of quiet here. I'm going to give another plug for stickers. Any of you people that want uh, channel trailers done or banners for your uh, channels, stickers did my wonderful um, channel trailer for me. Thumbs up, contact him, voice stickers. He will be glad to work with you. Did a great job. Oda May Brown. Oda May. Oda May. Oda May. Hi, Oda. <laughs> yeah, Jen was Jenny. Jen was MIA. Yeah, thank you, buddy Cha Cha. He, he just did a wonderful job. I love that opener when I'm on. I love to talk to people when I'm videoing in public and. The great opener. Did you ever have one of those nights? Hmm? Guys like what? I said, did you ever have one of those nights? The guys like, oh, no. <laughs> that was from our trip to L.A. Uh, Carl, I don't think I'm going to have a hangout tonight. I think I'm going to probably pop on other people's uh, hangouts. It's a great opener right there with that boom right in. I mean, stickers just captured the total essence of what uh, what it's about. He did. He just he did a great job. So I'm extremely happy, um, you know, that he was willing to take that on and do that job. Yeah, give people your email. Thank you, Harvey, so that people can contact you. So. And uh, stickers is for hire. Yeah, that'd be fun, Jenny. Jen. I'm going to go on Lisa Yarborough's a bit. I think, I'm not sure if it's a nut house. I think Tracy and Debbie. Kelly said blonde looks good all the time. I actually, I'm actually uh, prefer brunettes myself. So I want to get a, uh, for Space Girl, I want to get a big long blue wig. It'd be kind of fun. Nothing in the post yet, Harvey. Sorry. Um, yeah, because next week, instead of Space Girl from Planet Triple X, Tuesday night's going to be Sorority Brat Rosie on there. That'll be a bird of a different feather. Then I'm going to try to do a Marilyn Monroe, but the problem is my tits kind of, you know, I got to make sure I double tape that thing down so yeah it's uh canadian thanksgiving coming up tucker's watching hi tucker 
Hi, Mama Bear. <laughs> yeah, give it a few more days, Harvey. I'm sure it'll show up, honey. You never know if it ended up in customs or something like that. The Blue Kelly wig, yeah. Um, perfect. I didn't. I don't really know who's gonna. I'm gonna be watching Mama Beth do her chicken and dumplings. That's first on the agenda. I love Mama Beth. So, uh, as soon as I wrap up here in a few minutes, uh, she's gonna be starting her show. Yeah, it's about five fifteen, five twenty, I think, in Texas. So. Oh, it's from the USA. Okay, Harvey. They are talking Mama Bear married. Yeah, they should be, shouldn't they, Shauna? Shouldn't they be? Let's take a temperature check again. Right there, blast that heat a little higher for the last couple of minutes. That's it. That's it. Yeah, I think we got about uh, we got about ten more minutes, and that's going to be it. So we're in our final ten minute uh, ten minute countdown. I'm going to do a little Otome. <laughs> and uh, oh, I mean, that's right. You're in West Virginia. Dang, dang. I know. I know West Virginia like the back of my hand. Romney, Paul, Paul, Harper's Ferry. Clarksburg, uh, Hurricane, all up and down. Look at that. Mama Bess, like Rosie, I have to put a block on you in the kitchen now. Chester, West Virginia, there you go. I know. <laughs> you guys are too funny. Are you going to need to pick up some nice roast beef and ham? I know I'm going to have to make some awesome sandwiches. Love that shake. I just want to eat it straight up with some butter first, and then uh, we'll figure out. I might pick up something. I, I do like to bring people together. I do. But uh, last Friday night with Mama Bear kind of blew up. But, you know, I, you know, I keep the door open for Diane and everybody, so. Oh, you watching Tony Mullins' latest? Yeah, he's pretty funny. Huh? I think Stewie's pretty funny, too. Yeah, I like your topless pick, Harvey. Yeah. Yeah, warm bread and butter. I'm not much of a bread eater. I, I enjoy making it, but I will definitely eat this. <clears throat> and I'm going to be on the... You got any fries with that shape? Yeah, Elvis needs some more royalties. That's it. <laughs> Was. <laughs> uh, thank you, Dawn. <clears throat> I just think if, uh, you know, if uh, everybody could just wait their turn to speak and, but, uh, you know, it wasn't meant to be. There's. Lindy's like, I'll come on panel this Friday and really tear things up. Not. <laughs> uh. Yeah, you never know what the hell's going to happen on that hangout, you know? Jack Thompson, my internet bro. Like I know, I know 100% now, Mama. I know for sure, 100%. Mama Bear is watching right now. Rosie, why do you go on your hangout and tell people I'm watching you? <laughs> oh, you want to do a fortune teller? Fortune teller hangout. Hmm. I don't know. I'm not. I've never been one to dabble in the occult and all that stuff. I just think. Michelle, hi, sweetie. I have Wi-Fi tonight in Oregon. Awesome. Well, we're down to our last seven minutes here of our bread. Hey, Blue Ridge Bell. Nice to see you, honey. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
Yeah, I'm in my Dar's Day mode today. <laughs> I love Michelle. She's a lot of fun. Yeah, MB's a little angry with me since I'm, I'm, I've already told you guys, no, I'm the worst live stream host on YouTube. I don't have any any control over anything. Where's my shake on? Here you go, baby. <laughs> Stickers like so epic bored. <laughs> Stickers, you know to go chase down some drama. <laughs> Yeah, TV is just trash. I don't even watch TV anymore. I watch TV about uh, five times a year. <laughs> when I discovered YouTube, I had no idea. Yeah, the graveyard host. Okay, Odeme. I had no idea how great YouTube would be. I had like zero interest in TV. This is the greatest reality TV place on planet earth here you get involved in a community the community grows and expands and it becomes great fun yes it has its horrifying moments too it has its ridiculous moments it has its its terrible things and i feel sorry for the younger people some of the people that aren't used to being doxed they have families and jobs and all this it could be a really rough rough thing yeah, YouTube is it, baby. YouTube is it. One more temperature check here. Okay. We are right at 200 degrees. We're officially done. All right, here we go, guys. Let's be careful getting this out. I'm turning the oven off. Okay, I'm going to get my oven mid here. And there we go. Sit that baby right down right there. Okay. That amazing the way that turned out. We hit our internal temperature of uh, 200 degrees. See right there. It's a nice looking one today. We're going to go ahead and transfer that to the wire rack in a minute or two. Doesn't that look good? That's going to be really good eating, too. I just, I suddenly had a taste for, for delicatessen, Jewish delicatessen rye. Don't try to grab your skillet. Turn off the oven. Remember, we used the skillet to create the steam, which allowed this to rise beautifully. Don't touch that skillet. You'll be in the hospital. Close up your oven, turn it off, and just let it get all the way down to room temperature, okay? Just leave it alone. Yeah, you can live on the ranch. Kelly, you're always welcome to come visit us on the ranch, Joe. Anybody's welcome to come visit us. Got a nice cooling rack here. This should really cool down for at least an hour or two before you attempt to eat it because it's still very moist and still cooking inside. Thank you, Joey D. Thank you. So let's go ahead and transfer this to the uh, rack here. There she is. Here.
Be very careful handling everything. Okay? Came out really good. I'm happy with that. That's real good. Hope you feel better, Mrs. B, Mrs. Z. See all those nice caraway seeds on top. Hey, Roscoe. That's exactly what you want it to look like, just like that. Nice to see you, Roscoe. It's got a really nice crust on it. You can hear that nice crust. That's what you need on a Jewish rye bread. You need a crust. <laughs> Mike's like, do you deliver? <laughs> That's exactly the way you want... Uh, you can anybody can make artisan bread. It's all just it's all just technique and and, uh, and practice. Yeah, Mama Beth, you let me know when you're gonna go uh, airborne, and I'm gonna I'm gonna shut down here. I'm gonna encourage everybody to go up to over to Mama Beth's world. She's going to be making uh, chicken and dumplings tonight. So I think that that will be an epic, uh, epic hangout too. And there it is, our uh, finished products. I'll talk to you guys about eight more minutes. That'll bring us up to four o'clock here. So Mama Beth, whenever you're ready to go, I'll go about eight more minutes and that is it here. So I want to thank you guys for being on today. It was a lot of fun to make this delicatessen style Jewish rye bread. Remember, high heat baking stone or on the bottom of the oven on a pan for 10 minutes at the beginning, highest heat. Use your skillet with ice cubes. Use your spray bottle. Put a little egg wash on it. Put some caraway seeds. Yeah, I just slice it up and eat it with butter. You can also go buy. I might buy some. Uh, might buy some ham and some uh, turkey, roast beef, and serve that up with that too. Thank you, Mrs. Z. All right, take care, Shauna. All right, guys. To turn you over to our uh, other studio B tonight. So I want to thank you all for being along today, making a really nice Jewish delicatessen style loaf. And uh, your thumbs up are appreciated. If you've not hit the thumbs up button, please take a minute to do so. To do so, you too, Michelle, and I will see you guys around. Uh, I'll be here and there tonight just to say hi. One final shimmy. There you go. You're welcome, Kelly. Bye, everybody. Mm -hmm.